How many nights did I sleep in my tent? Did you have any bad experiences with other hikers? What's the readjustment period like? Am I going to do the other two hikes in the triple crown of hiking? Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be answering some of the most frequently asked questions about my through hike. I've been home for a couple weeks. I've gathered some really good questions that you guys have asked me on YouTube, and we're just going to have a chat about it. The first question that I saw that I thought would be really fun to get the answer to was how many nights did I sleep in my tent versus sleeping in town? So I actually opened an Excel sheet and wrote down all 121 nights on the Appalachian Trail and got some cool graphs. All right, so now I'm sitting at my computer and I have all the info pulled up on the screen right now. You can see I have every single day listed that I was on my through hike and next to each day I have what type of sleeping accommodation I used. So there's a couple different categories. You can see I have my tent, which is either literally sleeping in my tent or sleeping in a shelter or cowboy camping. I have hostels, which are specific hiker hostels. I have motels and hotels, so there's a little bit of quality difference between those two. And you can see I also have house. Um, there's probably some more of those at the end. It could be my house, it could be a friend's house, or a trail angel's house, which happened a couple times. So now on this sheet, you can see a little more clearly with the graphs that I slept in a hostel 18 times, I slept in a hotel 18 times, I slept in a house 11 times, I slept in a motel 12 times, and I slept in my tent 63 times. And if we add all that together, um, it's almost 50-50 between sleeping outside and sleeping inside. Um, inside was 48% of the time, and outside was 52% of the time. Now I think that isn't average. I think an average through hiker would definitely sleep outside more, but keep in mind I was vlogging, I was charging, I had a lot of connections, and I also had my parents visit a lot. So there were times where my mom would visit for like three, four days in a row, and I'd sleep in a hotel with her every single day. So. I definitely had good indoor accommodations, but I am very proud of myself that I managed to sleep outside, even if it was like a little more than 50% of the time. <laughs> All right, this is totally random, but I discovered these for the first time. It's Gatorade, but with zero sugar and 10 grams of protein. So I bulk ordered these at Sam's Club, and now I keep them in a cooler in my car in case I ever run into through hikers. And I did get a question asking if I was sick of Gushers yet, and the answer is no. I'm actually going to eat these right now. <laughs> it's good. This next question was asked on YouTube, and it got a lot of likes, so I think a lot of people were interested in hearing my thoughts about that. And the question is, if you could go back in time and give yourself pre-hike advice, what would that be? So to be honest, I am very happy with how my through hike played out. It was really fun, but I did manage to think of three different things that I would tell myself. The first is to kind of set my priorities. And I didn't start doing this until like halfway through my through hike, but there's a lot of different things that go on while you're hiking. And it's important to kind of take care of yourself first and do what you need to do and just like prioritize different things. So for example, I always prioritized being happy. So if that meant going into town and taking a shower or finding somewhere to do my laundry or finding somewhere to eat at a restaurant, I did everything I could to keep myself happy. And other things I prioritized was hanging out with people and being in the moment. So if there was a campfire, I would join that campfire and hang out with the people I was surrounded with instead of going in my tent to edit videos. So I prioritize friends and then I sometimes prioritize getting miles done. So if I needed to get to a certain place on time, I needed to do certain miles. But I always told people that the last thing on my priority list was YouTube. And although I loved vlogging and editing and posting things on YouTube and reading the comments, it was not the most important thing of my through hike. And I wish I realized that in the beginning. The second piece of advice I would give myself, and this applies again more in the beginning of the through hike, is to not stress so much about the weather. I kind of stress myself out 
starting in February because I thought I was going to be uncomfortably cold every single night, but that was not the case. I had a 10 degree sleeping bag. I had a sleeping bag liner. I had down booties. I had lots of layers. So I wish I didn't stress so much. There was only one morning where my shoes froze and I could barely get them on my feet, but it wasn't that bad. Um, if you do get cold at night, I would just say, I would tell myself to wake up and just start getting ready. I feel like there were some mornings where I just lay in my tent and just have a negative mindset and be like, it's too cold, I can't leave. But as soon as you get up and start moving and start hiking, you're not that cold anymore. So if you're ever cold, just hike faster, get out of camp and just move. And if it is too bad, if you think it's gonna flood or there were like hurricane warnings or a lot of crazy weather in the south, most of the time it's not difficult to get to a road crossing and to go into town. So I would tell myself, don't stress about the weather, it will work out. And lastly, my third piece of advice would be, it is not a race. You don't have to compete with other hikers. You don't have to try to get more miles than you did the day before. And you don't have to be the first person at camp, which I think I struggled with a little bit. I think if there was a group of people and we all knew we were going to meet at a certain spot, I would feel really bad about myself if I was the last person at that campsite. And sometimes I'd show up two hours after Cody would and that's okay. Like. There's no need to stress yourself out and try to hike faster. And actually this applied all the way to some of the last days of my through hike where I was really hard on myself for not hiking as fast as I maybe could have. So I would just remind myself that it's not a race. Go at your own pace and you don't have to stress out and compete with other people. Just hike your own hike, go your own speed and it's fine. And it's actually this kind of specific subject that caused that fight between Cody and I that I touched on on Instagram a little bit. We both had a bad mindset of trying to race and being competitive and it wasn't healthy for us. It was taking away some of the fun of the through hike and there was no reason for us to be going that fast towards the end. So we sat down, we talked about it and realized that we just need to like chill, have fun, go at our own pace. So I wish I knew all of that going into the through hike. So that's my last piece of advice that I would give myself. The next question is, did you have any bad experiences with other hikers or locals that you remember? And I kind of had to think about this a little bit, but I did think of five. So I'm gonna go through them real quick. The first person I met at Galehead Hut that I kind of talked about this a little bit in one of the vlogs, and he was very rude. Um, he was a know-it-all, but the stuff he was telling me was not factual. He was telling me I was going the wrong way on trail when I was 100% sure I wasn't. He was judging my gear, he was judging a lot of choices I was making on my through hike, and he was just really rude about it. I tried to walk away from the conversation, but he tried to keep it going and he thought he was above me, which I did not appreciate at all. But I talked about it more in one of my vlogs that I'll try to link right here if that works. Anyways, the second person that comes to mind, I wouldn't say this is a bad experience, but more a, an experience that I wish didn't happen. And I don't think this guy meant any harm, but this was one and a half miles before the 800 mile marker. And I was really excited in the first thousand miles of the through hike to get to those hundred mile markers. But this day I was just not in a good mood. I think I was tired, I was hungry. And we met someone who, insisted on following us to the 800 mile marker and I didn't really want that and I don't think he got the hint. Um, this guy was on a bicycle, he didn't know anything about backpacking and he asked literally over a hundred questions of just things I didn't really feel like explaining. Um, so he followed us on trail, he was behind us on his bicycle and it kind of got annoying. He didn't get the hint that we didn't really feel like talking and we got to the 800 mile marker and it was very anticlimactic because the more questions that he was asking, the worse mood I was in. Um, so I feel bad if he ever sees this, but it was just not my day. If it was any other day, maybe I would have accepted it more, but it was just not a great experience. <laughs> the third person, real quickly, was a local in Duncannon that kind of 
made me feel a little unsafe. Um, the entrance to the hostel we were staying at was kind of like behind a building down like an alley and this local insisted on walking us to the back entrance of the hostel down this alleyway when it was pitch black and it was not a great experience. Thankfully I was not alone. I was with Cody but I just wish he didn't do that. Um, if he wanted to like let us know directions he probably could have given us directions but I didn't feel like I needed to be escorted by a stranger. <laughs> I think UPS is here. Okay, the fourth person I don't want to get too specific about but it was a man who I feel treated me differently because I was a woman and I feel like he didn't think I was capable of as much as the men were or maybe I intimidated him or whatever but there were a lot of different things he did throughout the day or two that we were hiking around him that just made me feel weird um, and Cody noticed it I noticed it and up until this point I never thought that women were treated differently on trail but then I started seeing little things and it just I don't know I just didn't like it and this fifth person was another through hiker that made it very obvious that he did not approve of Cody and I slack packing. So we'll just leave it there. <laughs> All right, so now we'll move on to the next question. And that is, what's the readjustment period like? I can only speak for myself. I don't know what the readjustment period is like for everyone, but I'll just talk about my experience. It has not been what I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to complete my through hike and come home and have all this like new sense of motivation to get things done specifically at work. And it's been the opposite. I have not gone to work as much as I thought. I feel like I go to work for a couple hours at a time and I just do what needs to be done as quick as possible and then I've been coming home. Um, I do feel like I'm in this new type of way more efficient so when I do go to work I get a lot more done and I don't really goof off but I've just been home a lot more than I thought I was going to be. I've only gone on two hikes in the last few weeks and they were very small hikes. Um, I've been spending a lot of my time just kind of organizing the house and taking it easy. I do still wake up every morning sore, which I think is weird. It's really hard to walk down the stairs first thing in the morning, but I've been doing very well. I don't feel sad at all. I do miss the trail. I really want to plan another trip, but right now I'm focusing on my wedding, so I can only really plan one thing at a time. Someone asked if I would do the Appalachian Trail again and what like logistic changes I would make if I were to do that. So I think I would hike the Appalachian Trail again. I had so much fun and I would try to make it very different so it would feel like a different through hike. I would go Sobo. Um, I think I would try to do it faster. That's just the competitor in me. I would try to be more supported. Um, maybe I would slack pack more and have more people come out and help and stay in town. I don't know if it's possible to stay in town more than I did last year, but we'll see. Um, and I would also try to go more ultra light. I wouldn't take as many luxury items. And I would probably film it again, but not daily. Maybe a couple times a week I would put out a video or once a week. But yeah, I would try to do it faster and Sobo. I think those would be the major changes. And lastly, am I going to do the other two hikes in the Triple Crown of hiking? So am I going to do the Pacific Crest Trail or the Continental Divide Trail? And before I did the AT, I always said I did not have interest in doing those two trails. But now that I have completed a through hike, I kind of have more of an interest. So I'm not planning um, a hike of those two trails right now but I would be happy if I did do those hikes. So that's the answer I have right now. It would be really cool if I could through hike those with Cody, um, but we'll just see if it all aligns. So <laughs> that's gonna do it for today's updates slash Q&A video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have more videos coming out every week on specific gear or specific topics about my through hike. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't done that yet. I think only half of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed, so let's try to fix that. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!